Hello, welcome to Talk of Taz Live. I'm your host, Dr. Teresa Smith, Dr. Taz, and today I'm really excited. I've been having the pleasure of interviewing the cast of the remarkable gospel stage play, The Brownie, An Unforgettable Journey. And I'm telling you guys, this stage play is just, it's going to be unbelievable. The characters that I have been learning about and the actors are you are going to be in for a treat hello everyone um i'm bringing some folks this now I'm in, um i think i've got oh hi, hi. now hi. how are you doing good, good morning. morning i'm doing well it's so good to see you ladies y'all looking good Thank you, thank you. I'm bringing in someone else here. Okay. Probably Pat. I think so. Let's see here. Let's see I got everybody coming in. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, Michael made it. <laughs> That's the club patron. He patronized the club. He liked to hang oh. out in the strip club. Oh, that's the <laughs> no, I was saying that he was a patron. I, I didn't Good know this. Good morning. Mm -hmm. She had already started okay? telling you guys on the slide why you got to see yeah. the stage play. And again, if you can't get to Miss Cynthia, they're going to have copies of it. So we're going to make sure that you can get your copy. And you, but yeah. you know, he, go to, he goes to Greater Trials also. So you might want to talk to him about that. Yeah. Okay. He's going to Greater Trials yeah. also. I tell and you he, that. He that church too. Missionary Baptist <laughs> Church. I'm telling you, everything goes on at Great Trials Missionary Baptist <laughs> Church. I mean, that's right. This is a place to be. And I think I saw uh, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. You see, there's a few people that I think I saw join us. But we're going to go ahead and get started. They should be coming in. I brought them all in. So I know that Michael should be joining us. He should pop in. He's on. That's oh, he's on. Oh, I just can't see that's him. That's the club thing. <laughs> I can't hear her. Well, she said reason. that's the I club thing. I guess so. Uh, he's not. Am I? What's going on with her? Yeah, uh, in the club. Is that one of Fifty Cent's? Uh, is that Fifty in the club? Not and I like Fifty. Those people might not in the club. Let me think. Yeah, I like my Fifty. But anywho. I don't attend Greater Trials Missionary Baptist Church, but some of these people are going to say she did, She obviously attends that church too because she got something in the closet too. No, I just like <laughs> all music, guys. Love all music. Oh, they oh, you all laid back with the two, ain't <laughs> My, he chilling. He probably just left the club. Probably, probably been there all night. Like, just left the club because it's a little early, and I guess he said, "Well, I won't go to bed because right. mm -hmm. I'm not going to get my best. So let me just try to stay up since uh." <laughs> It's after the club breakfast. After the club breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go to the house after the club. Oh, you know, yeah, all the time. <laughs> that you can kind of get that hangover uh, uh, from you a little bit. But but just work with us, Michael. Work with us. Okay. But I, again, am so happy to have the cast members of the remarkable stage, gospel stage play, The Brownie, and Unforgettable Trip with me, along with their director, Felicia. So what I'm going to do for those who, are not, who may not know what's going on, I'm going to ask Felicia to give a quick synopsis of the stage play, and then we're going to talk to these characters that we have with us today. All righty. So for those of you all that are interested in knowing a little bit about what the Brownie is about, basically the Brownie is about a group of churchgoers who all think that whenever the Lord calls them, they're all going to heaven. They've done everything right, and they're the perfect Christian, and there's nothing wrong with them to stop them from going. And they have this church usher named Sister Nadine Simmons. She runs the church. She loves her pastor. She is pretty much, you could say, a, a gospel bully in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, they all go on a trip, a retreat. The pastor tells them this trip is going to change us. It is going to be unforgettable. And so on the trip, something happens, and they end up in a place that they didn't expect to be. And on that day, they find out who really is and who really is not going to make it in. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are these characters going to make it in? And whether they go on the trip or not, what behavior did they contribute? 
bit to perhaps some of these other people not making it in. Mm. So we gonna start mm. with Tamika. Tamika, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your character, Amber, I believe. Well, Amber is still finding herself. She's like a babe in Christ and she's seeking guidance. She's independent in, in a way. But she still seeks that guidance and somebody that role model type, and she finds that in Nadine, mm. and and she's still struggling with the career she's chosen and her faith. So she, she's kind of like walking a tight little rope, dealing with that, and and she prays a lot about it and trying to get some guidance from up above to see what she needs to do but she's still trying to just find herself and she's just doing what she needs to do to survive at that time and so she just made the decision she, she thought she needed to make to get the things she wanted mm. hmm. so she's doing what she needs to do to survive and get the things that she wants exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to have to come back to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we got Amber's mother with us, I believe. Got Patricia here. Now tell us a little bit about your about yourself as an Amber's mom and then what you think about your daughter. <laughs> well, of course, like every mother, I love my daughter, but Amber Roche Johnson knows that I didn't raise her like this. Yes, and so the fact that she feels like she has to go to that club, it is heartbreaking. And as a mother, uh, may have been some things throughout our journey that were not always the best, if you will, but race to the best I could. And sure enough, didn't raise her to be shaking her tail in no club. Because, you know, I didn't raise no uh, H-words right. in my house. So, um, my mom in this... Uh, in this play, she reaches out to her daughter and tries to implore her to please consider a different way because mom's concern is certainly for her relationship with God. And we don't want God to find her up in the club. And even she tries to, um, to prick on her relationship with her grandmother because Amber was really close with her grandmother. And so helping her to understand that your grandmother wouldn't be pleased and neither would God and neither am I. I respect you and I respect the fact that you care so much for your daughter. And you know, Amber, you're hearing how your mother feels. She's concerned about your well-being. Uh, she loves you regardless, but it doesn't. She doesn't want you to be in the club shaking your thing. Now, I didn't realize that there's perhaps a connection between you and Mike here. Um, uh, so, you, are, so are you an exotic dancer in a club? What? Well, yes, I am. It's well, you, you, you know, uh, my what's your name? My name is Caramel Delight. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, let me just tell you this now. I don't know where um, your stage name came from, but, you know, Stouffer's has sugar-free candy, guys. And every now and then I like to have a little piece of sugar-free candy. And it's, they got little caramels, and I've always liked caramel. That's what I like. Uh, all the little candy bars I used to eat mm -hmm. many moons ago. They got a pecan delight. And so you need it almost a pecan color, hmm. but you care light. So I can see uh, I can see how things get a little um construed. Let's yes, not yes, encourage yes. any additional <laughs> stage names, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, this I'm is sorry. my baby you talking about. I'm southern. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, ma'am. Um <laughs> Camel delight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me talk to the king in the house. Um, Michael, you you do you frequent the club that um, Amber works at? Ma'am. Yes, I was asking. Do you frequent the club that Amber works at? Am I? Do I go frequently? Uh, do you go to the club? 
Yes, sir. I, I, is that the club you go to? Apparently, I do. Um, <laughs> I don't know the backstory. I don't know the backstory of it. Like, if I go there, like every every time, yeah. but they got another club down the street called J Jack Jane and Jim. Oh, that's the one you want. Jack and Jim. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Jane and Jill. <laughs> uh, Jack and Jill. Jane and Jill or Jack and Jill? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, it's amazing how they'll take a, a nursery rhyme and they will then turn it into a, a name for a brand of something. Because, you know, Jack and Jill went up the hill the, during my time. You probably never heard Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill is one of those new contemporary type clubs, strip clubs, and you know Mike and his crew they they kind of uh, strip club hop, you could say. You know they go check out Amber, see what she doing, harass her, and then they go on down the, the street to Jane and Jill when it's you know when the security guard get pissed, pissed off and throw them out. <laughs> so, so you harassing Amber? Mm -hmm. Well. Y'all go to the same. Do you go to uh, you go to Great Trials Missionary Baptist Church, don't you? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, I do. Uh, well, but both of y'all go to this church. Yep. <laughs> I <see>. Yep. <laughs> so, are y'all? Yeah. Are y'all like some of the church people who have a great time on Saturday night, but then when they get to church on Sunday morning, they holier than thou? Is that is that what I'm supposed to get from this? Um. Yes, cause you you yo yo yeah, cause you you falling behind Nadine. Does she know you stripping? Yes, she knows. And what has she said to you? Cause she's so prissy. Well, she 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 has the, her little smart things that she likes to say to me about my chosen profession. But I kind of shrug it off and ignore her because, like I say, I'm doing what I need to do to get what I want. So I just ignore Nadine sometimes but she she has the things little smart things that she says okay okay well now this is a very um sanctimonious church <laughs> it is Pastor Craig you know uh he loves his congregation we've got brother Wright there um and brother Bowler uh mm -hmm. and we've got associate minister whose name escapes me right now so I know that this is a very sanctimonious church you do what you have to do to get what you need. Does the church not have any ministries that could help young folks who are struggling um, financially, um, maybe almost like a work a, a work program, so that they don't have to support them? Well, I'm not aware, but I don't think so because I think the pastor, you know, has other things that he needs to take care of when it comes to extra funds for the church so <laughs> mm. I don't think there are any you know options like that available to me so I'm doing what I gotta do well I'm a, you know we all are friends here I am gonna tell you you know I I came into the community and mm -hmm. spent some time talking to very people in the community mm -hmm. and uh, I've not even spoken to Pastor Craig and Miss Craig first lady and mm -hmm. so I understand that he is kind of uh fascinated with one of the church members um and so, so i don't even know if she's a member but this young lady that attends the church. and uh so i don't know if maybe that's the reason why he hasn't thought about this sort of ministry to help the young folks who are trying to make their way in life um but i'm not busy trying to help the other folks too busy trying to help the other folks so you are you, so you're not talking about champagne that's the young oh, lady that's that, that's exactly who i'm talking about oh so he's too busy trying to get money for champagne and ain't trying to put nothing in place to help the young people trying to live a good godly life all i know is that they are not treating my daughter right but i digress well is this the church how you do george uh bless his heart now is this a, do you attend this church too um ma'am um, I visit, I guess, occasionally, but it's not my church. So it's not, not your cup of tea. Well, no. folks act up in there. You know, I, I see how they act up in there. And I don't think that, and it's that lady in there that tries to 
influence my daughter or somehow feels like she's taking the motherly role, Miss Nadine, she's mm -hmm. not her mother. I am. No, ma'am. And I and don't appreciate you know, that. And I respect that because I've heard a lot about Miss Nadine. I've, I've met with her too. And um I you know, and, and I've talked about it um openly, so we're not, you know, you know, not saying nothing that hasn't already been aired out oh, in the right. public. But uh, Sister Nadine, um, she's not really doing right by her exactly. husband. She's got children that she's not doing right by them. And I can understand you're being a bit put off that this woman, yeah. Sister Nadine, excuse me, is trying to tell you how to basically try to take over your role as right. a member. I don't and, appreciate you know, it at all. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I can certainly respect that um, because some people would say, it's not much difference between what Nadine is doing and what Amber is doing. From the because, stuff you know, I heard it ain't. Uh, it's my understanding, you know, she want a man that ain't even hers. So, you know, we'll leave that right there. But I need Sister Nadine to ease up off my daughter. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we're going to talk back with Amber when she comes back in. And I can certainly respect that because you want your daughter to go down the right path and, um, Time is winding up, right. those old folks. Hey, right. And I don't know if they try to judge me. They probably even judge her, but they need to get to know my daughter yes, and yes. know that her heart is loving and kind. And mm -hmm. they don't want to know the other side of me. Oh, they don't want to. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Well, you know, a mother will fight however she has to. Uh -huh. um, now and that bomb is that, that bomb? I'm not. We're gonna see. I hope I'm bringing in the right people. Okay, okay. Because I know they got uh, booted out. So we're gonna see if they're coming back in this way. But yeah, a mother will fight for her children. That's my job. And it's your ch yes, yes ma'am. And you'll do it. You'll do whatever it takes. Absolutely. I'll say. And you know, I just want you to know, Amber, your mother really loves you. Yeah. She really loves you. I know. And, you know, and, you know, I think that, you know, this this may be a way to open up the door for some healing. I don't know if there's been some misunderstanding, but this may be a way to open up the door for some healing because she is concerned about you, your well-being. She she doesn't mind you being a person of faith, but she wants to make sure that you are not being influenced in the wrong manner. She wants you to have a better life than even what she had. And so, therefore, she seems a little tough sometimes. That's because she wants the best for you. She really does. And we've been talking about Sister Nadine and, you know, Sister Nadine and her ways, you know. She mm -hmm. got some money. And, um, you know, we've been talking about her. And nobody is perfect. But, you know, Sister Nadine is, is out there in the public. You know, so when it's in the public, we can talk about it. And I talked to her and Kenny. And then Pastor Craig and Sister Craig, First Lady Craig, rather. And um, she she really feels that she is pastor's church wife. And <laughs> yes. and, uh, so what can she tell my daughter? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Very little that she can tell your daughter because she is out of place. She's gotten out of line. So she really can't tell your daughter anything Thank because you. the life we live, she speak for us, right. as the song says. And her life, unfortunately, is speaking for her. Hmm. So, um, Michael, does your is this your church your church family home, or is this just a church that you decide to go to? Um, we talking about the play, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I think it's my home since it was reading, you know, um, to say it was. So, yes, this is my church home. I don't like y'all said. I don't really know the background of like the um club patron, but he do say um in the play, he say um uh don't you go to my church? You sure do. So I'm thinking it's my my um my home, my church home. Well, you 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 feel comfortable at this church? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I get to do what I want to do. I get to go to the <laughs> club. I get to go to church. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't go on the trip, but, you know, like, hopefully I get it together, you know, so. Yep, but I love going to the script club. Well, do you see, um, uh, do you do you see any of the church men at the strip club? Uh, yes, yes. Or anybody? Brother Bowler, Mister Kenny, um, on everybody. Yeah, I see them there. Yeah, okay. they yep. passed the problem though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, somebody has said to me that Pastor Craig didn't have to go because he already had his stripper. Uh, he he's got his personal. Uh, stripper. Uh, you don't have to go to the crowd. I'm not surprised. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. But <laughs> on it. You know, so you know, it's you know. I tell you, I've come into this community and I found so much about the families and their interactions and the church members. And it's just amazing to me all of the things that are going on. And, you know, from the outside looking in, without me having met with church people and the community people, it seems like Greater Trials Missionary Baptist Church is really focused on winning souls to Christ and helping individuals to better themselves. But as I've got to know individuals more, church members, the pastor, first lady, um, those that just um, periodically attend, some of the um, families who do attend, some of their siblings that may not really attend church there, it really is, it's not what it appears to be. So let me ask this, this and, and, and y'all forgive me, I know you didn't go, Michael, on the, um, on the church trip. Uh, are you going, Amber, on the church trip? Why, yes, I am. I'm going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Bless your soul. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to help out with the trip, you know, volunteer some funds if needed. But I'm going here. So you go. You, so you. <laughs> Jesus opened his arms for everybody. God knows. Exactly. Everybody, come. Come as you everybody. are. That's right. But what it almost sounds like you're saying is that you're stripping and able to front, that might be the wrong word, but <laughs> that front the trip for the church. Well, I can provide, you know, additional funds if needed. No, I have the ability to do that now with my new job. <laughs> what has the church done for you lately? Well, they're providing me with my spiritual guidance. They're helping me along the way. So since they're helping me, I can help them in return by, you know, assisting with the trip if needed. But Amber, your mama is listening. I know it's legal to be an exotic dancer or a stripper. And I'm not, I'm not, understand, I want better for you. And I just feel so, I feel some kind of way that the church knows what you're doing, but they're willing to take your money. But do you realize people talking about you in the church behind your back? Mm. I, I know and I, I don't care. I, I don't care because, you know, I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing what I need to do. I have to survive too. So, and they're not turning down those funds, and I know Pastor won't. <laughs> well, well, you know he's not because he's got you know champagne on the side. Well, not on the side. She right there in the church. He just goggles. I've heard how she walks down the aisle. And he's just like, exactly. Up there in the pulpit, and that's the way he goes on. And it's just some people would say it's a disgrace. It's a shame and a disgrace how he goes on. But I just. Feel so. It just saddens me that they know that you're what you're doing, mm -hmm. and this. The, you know, I understand. Michael said, you know, Kenny's there, but Kenny, he's a good man, and he's just trying to see have a little, a little entertainment yeah. there because mm -hmm. his wife really not together. But Bala has got multiple women, and so here it is. I just, I just feel some kind of way the way that they are taking advantage of you. 
And then Nadine is your mentor and bless her soul. You, know, <laughs> you have to be careful who you select as a mentor. Because see, you, you basically said, you know, you do whatever, do what you need to do to get what you want. Well, she does that. So mm. did you get that from her? <laughs> Maybe a little, maybe. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I appreciate your honesty. Appreciate your honesty. I'm going you to Yeah, I do. I do. Now, do what, what do you want out of life? Do you want a husband? Do you want children sometimes? I, I believe I am entitled and will have a husband one day. I do believe that. Regardless okay. of what, I do or what I've done in my past, I believe. I will find that person. And you going on the trip? I am. Bless your soul. Guys, mm -hmm. they're going on this trip and uh, it gets a little, it gets a little, um, mm -mm -mm. it gets a little out of hand on this trip. <laughs> and so, let me say, so well, why did she keep going on like this? Because I've talked to say, for those who have missed it, uh, it's all on my YouTube channel. And it's all on Instagram. I've talked <clears throat> to Satan and God. And something goes wrong on this trip. And the people <laughs> that are on the trip wind up in front of Satan and God, Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. and, you know, some people think they're going to be able to make it in. And they didn't tell me who won't go make it in. But they let me know everybody won't go into the kingdom, God's kingdom. And that's the reason why I'm harping on this, because you see, I want Amber to have, I want all of them to, but you see, she's young, she's impressionable. I want her to have an opportunity at a better life. Mm -hmm. I want her to be able to get into the kingdom. And that's mm -hmm. the reason I keep harping on it, because she's in the church, God knows she's in the church, but she might be in the wrong church, mm -hmm. because People at the Greater Trials Missionary Baptist Church, they seem to be more about themselves than they are about God. And this is a young woman who got her whole life ahead of her, hopefully, because she went on that trip. So hopefully she'll have her whole life ahead of her. Sounds so, like you know, and her mom are on the same page when it comes to what you all want from her. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 Felicia. We're on the same page. We're on the same page. <laughs> well, now... Michael, mm -hmm. you know, I want to go back to you too. I, I know that you, um, you enjoying yourself. You was a young man. I understand that. <laughs> and you, you like, like to make it rain. And you seen Brad Baller make it rain. Cause Brad Baller pays fifteen, twenty percent of his time. You know, so he don't like that. And he, you know, he could, he's got enough money to have all these women around town. Still go out there and make it rain. He's married too now. Y'all that didn't know, he's married too. He can make it rain. Is that all you have a life making it rain? Well, I'm in church and uh you know, I, I just like the script club. I like going to the script club. They didn't they didn't they didn't uh they didn't let they didn't ask me to go on a church trip, so you know, I guess I go shoot ball or go fishing or Play pool or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have you thought about starting a church ministry for the young men in the church? Because obviously they have it. Where y'all don't have to go to the strip club and all the nice things that you said. Play ball, go fishing. You know, build you guys up. Show you how kept, that you're king. <laughs> have you thought about that? It only takes one person to get it started. <laughs> shaking us. And don't shake the to the strip club. <laughs> 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 she just that she gonna get to the church, and you see how they but treating her. No, you, you, get it like me. you you got a lot of potential in you, Michael. You got a lot of potential. You your mind is thinking there are some good things that you could be doing, and you could start a men's group for a group of for young men. And there's an alternative to going stripping. That's an I mean, excuse me, not going stripping. For y'all going to see the strippers. I don't think y'all stripping, but you know, I don't know because you got talking about all this different stuff that's going on, these different clubs that I don't know what's going on. I just don't know. You know, let me ask you this. This is an earnest question. Do you like strip clubs? Oh my I'm gonna be honest. I have never been to one. 
never been to a strip club. You should try it. She I've probably go to the I should try it. You should try it. Amber. We have a lot of female patrons. <laughs> they, yes. yes. they come from down the street. Yes. They come from down the street. I believe it. You know, you have to be careful what you let in your eyes, your ears, because that goes to your heart. And so I, I am God trying knows to my heart. Yes. Oh, the famous answer, the famous response. God knows my heart. Ooh. And, uh, let me just tell you, I, you, you have, you have met God yet. I met God. God ain't no joke. If you think that he's easy going. The way he, when I met with him and said it, the way he talked, he laid it down. He's worse than your strict daddy. Have you ever had a strict daddy? Anybody? He's worse than your strict daddy. He done took strict daddy up to a whole nother level. So, you know, he knows what's in your heart. I don't think that excuse is going to work when, when they come and you own that truth too. I don't think that's going to work. Uh -uh. So he said he keep giving you chance after chance after chance. And here I am actually trying to give you chat you guys chances and opportunities. And so God's working through me and I just, just thought about it. Because he said I gave them chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity, and still they would not turn back from their mm -hmm. wicked ways. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They wicked ways, Michael. So again, he's he's there. Every day he's with us all the time. So, like uh, Felicia said, he knows my heart. Mm -hmm. He wants us to put some action behind what's in our heart. And that's the same thing her mother has been saying to her. You see, mom's on there with her head. Look, she got a finger on her head. Like I just told her this over and over again. Right. Mike should say anything because he's my number one customer. Oh well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Okay. Like, how you you're number one customer. I, I mean he don't even I, pay ties, Teresa. He don't even pay those, ties. He give all his money to the strip Don't she take checks? <laughs> <laughs> I take checks, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, all of it. <laughs> My <laughs> Lord. Any way you can get it. Yes. Number one. <laughs> well, gee. I I didn't know it had become such a, I knew it was a big business. A big business. I didn't know people were just taking cash out, Venmo, paper. It All of it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I might not, I had heard that you were the viewers of the Club Patreon, but also that you're homeless. Is this the reason why you're homeless for giving all your money? To Amber. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I I like I ain't never really thought of it. I guess them two them two different um characters. So I don't become homeless from like being in the script club and all that. Like I don't play the I don't I don't I ain't never asked Miss Felicia, you know, was that the same character because it's a homeless guy and it's club patron. So I'm guessing it's like two different characters. Well let me just Say this, whether well, it's two different characters or not, you smart young man, if you've given all your money to Amber at Strip Club, are you gonna have money to pay for you? Take your roof over your head, your, your right heel, as we like to say. You don't have to have money. See, this is what I do. See, I know how to manage my money. <laughs> He know how to manage to give it to me. Okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it sounds like. All his money is going on. How oh, does yeah. that make you feel? How does that make you feel, Ever, that you got people coming in there patronizing you and they don't even have food to eat the rest of the week? They don't even have a place to stay something. How does that make you feel as a woman? Well, that, that is absolutely not my concern, what goes on at home. When they come in that strip club, I'm there to get my money. Right. Regardless. Look, look at, at your, the look on mama's face. Look at your mama's face. Come on, mama. She didn't, Even though it, now she did get the principle right, but I didn't want you to use it at the strip club. <laughs> You hear you? Well, I had to use it where I needed to use it. 
You had to use it where you need to use it. Mm -hmm. Amber, you're a smart girl. You can do a whole lot more. You don't have to be a stripper. Well, maybe, but at the moment, it's the strip club for me. Mama looks so disappointed. Oh, the look on her face. I tried. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I knew my mama just probably in heaven, just about to. I don't know. We may have a tsunami behind this. Yes, ma'am. Because, you know, our loved ones, they go before us, but they're looking down on us. Those right. who go to heaven, and it's so disappointing because they often try to help us to understand right. that life is precious and we got to make good decisions. And because they know what happens when we get to judgment, some of them didn't go up, some of them went okay. down, or whatever Satan's at. You know, mm -hmm. so again, we just got to, to, to figure out ways for life to be better. Again, now I know that we're going on, on this trip, uh, Amber. And mm -hmm. uh, did you help bake brownies? Do I what? Uh, did, did you help bake the brownies? Because I, I heard there was going to be some brownies on the trip. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Nadine doesn't let anybody touch those brownies. No, I didn't help make them. She makes them herself. <laughs> did you do all some? I can't say that she did. She didn't give us any. Mm, I'm pass, pass Craig. Mm -hmm. He gets first dibs on, you know, everything from Miss Nadine. Oh, he gets first dibs on everything yeah. from Miss Nadine. That's, that's, her her. Mm. Okay. that's her church husband. Okay. That's, that's her. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, let me just ask this. Don't become no fight. What makes what? Well, let me. Well, is Champagne going on a trip? She's not going. She's mm -hmm. Yeah, she's going. Oh, Sister Craig ain't going. She going? First Lady. Okay, I understand. Sister Craig, I understand. First Lady said she's not going. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be Native mm -hmm. Champagne and the packs in between. And Native is going to be prostituting with the brown that nobody Yes, you have yeah. mm -hmm. She's holding on to him tight. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The mentor of my daughter. <laughs> yes, you tell the truth, ma'am. Tell the truth, because I've heard a lot about this since I've been visiting this community. <laughs> so here she is uh, uh, feeding the past the brownies that nobody else can have. And he's trying to get them from her to champagne, and his wife is at home. This is well, by Pastor Craig's coming, I don't think he's too happy about that comment. He's, he said, really? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people don't oh. like the truth. He don't like the truth? Sometimes. Truth can hurt. Yeah. Yeah, the truth can hurt. Uh, uh, but you write the truth can hurt. And I'm just, you know, I'm just so knowing that I've already been talking to Satan and God, I just feel for Amber. I feel for the ways that she can really convey it because we all got free will. But it's like I get making the right decision. Are you making decisions for right now or for your future? Well, for me, it's for right now. I'm not thinking about it. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Immediate gratification. Yes. Instead of delay gratification, I'm, I'm choosing immediate. What kind of sermons does the I, We didn't talk about what type of philosophy he's preaching and stuff. What type of sermons does he preach about? You're making decisions right now. Pastor Craig is more like the kind that he wants the choir to sing, everybody clap and shout and praise and worship, and then he pretty much just wants to say, wasn't that a good time? Wasn't that a great praise and worship? Now let's take up the money and let's get ready to go home. He's like that. Yeah, they, they like to be entertained. I thought you were going to say that, Felicia. So he really, 
not preaching the word and try to save people and help people and I understand why. Because with a brother, if he was preaching about um and I'm using this term very liberally, think the moment is living then that would mean that might cut off some of that money that Brabala is putting into the uh and he wants that money from Brabala and everybody else to keep flowing. And so he's not willing to cut off that money build the safe souls. Yeah, yeah, he uh I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm going to have to exit at this point. Um, thank you, mother. My daughter, you. and I'm going to thank do everything you, I can to save her. Thank Bye, you, mama. Mama. We you. All right. Bye, Bye, mama. Mama. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. I tell you, you, got a loving mama, got a praying mother, and then you got a minister that's not really preaching, trying to save the souls. He's just there basically uh, conducting a um, um, Entertainment, just yeah. entertainment, and right. uh, he wants to collect that money. So it really, Lord forgive me, but it almost seems like the greater transmission of the Baptist Church is like the strip club. Yeah. I don't really want to. There you go. But yeah, that's not the thing, though, Amber. That is like see how Pastor Craig making sure he collects his money. It's teaching me the same. I'm going to make sure I collect mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Guys, the audience, the children are listening and they are watching everything that we are doing. Little Amber. Amber. <laughs> yeah, Amber is justifying what she's doing based upon what the church is doing. Mm -hmm. And what can you say? The children are listening. They mm -hmm. are observing us. Mm -hmm. Now we we we're having fun with this, but we're talking about some very serious themes and issues that permeate throughout all communities, not just African American or, or communities of color. This is real life that we're talking about. This is real reality community that we're talking about. And because of that, you know, Felicia will have uh, social workers on hand. Because some of the content may trigger you. And so we want to be very conscious of that because these are deep things. These are things, these are um, issues that families are dealing with every day. But we want you to come out, out still and see the play. Because you're going to see how she takes these things and she weaves it through these people and the trip. And some of them are going to come out on the other end better. And that's say to you that you can be better also. Now, Felicia, and I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask you too, Amber and um, Mike, why should people come to see this stage play? Why should they come and see the stage play? I'm going to start with Amber, then I'm going to go to Mike, and then I'm going to go to you, Felicia. Why should they come and see this play? People should come and see this play because it's it gives them true enlightenment on day-to-day -day things, um, decisions that they should make day-to-day, -day, how they should live their life, how they should interact with people, um, how they should pay attention to the word and study the word. So I think that is, uh, those are very good reasons why they should come see it. They'll get, they'll get teachings on how to behave in the church, how to interact with people outside of the church, and just overall teaching spirit about his word. That's why I think everybody should come. They will get a lesson for sure in all in very, very, very different aspects of things in life. Mike, why do you feel that people should come out and see this play? Basically what uh, Amber said, uh, so they can get a full <laughs> understanding of what's really going on and how they can apply it to their daily life and and see what they need to fix, you know, and the people we think going to heaven ain't going to heaven, you know. So, you know, and uh I feel if they if they'd have been with us from the beginning and seeing us like doing stuff like this, like, you know, talking about it. They, they they really gonna be surprised when they see what's really going on in the play 
So, you know, they'll, they'll like it, but they might be a little confused, but they're going to like it, you know, so, yeah. And I think you, you said, um, I think you said the people that we think going to heaven, they're not going. And that's the way that it always is. You know, the people that we admire in the church, because there are people who admire, admire Sister Nadine and Brother Wright, you know, Deacon Wright, and Brother Baller, and Pastor Craig. Uh, and I'm not saying they're going or not going to heaven. But God said, what you do to the least of mine, and I'm, and I'm not a Bible quote person, but what you do to those that you basically think are less than, you've done it to me. So even feel like with that brownie, it's only for Pastor Craig. Well, the fact that she won't let y'all have any brownie, she did it to God because God is in all of us. So I think that that's a very good point that both of you were making, Michael and um, Amber. Felicia, why do you say that people need to come out and see this play? Well, first of all, other than the fact that I think I wrote a pretty good stage play production, uh, I think in between all of the laughing, that there are going to be uh, lessons, you know, as I said before, they're going to learn some things. And one of the most important things that they're going to learn, um, and what I think is going to become more aware to them is, it's the little things that might keep you out of heaven. It's the little bitty things that you don't think anything about, or you don't think they're a big deal, but they are big deals for God. So I would yeah. say, come out and, and uh, come out and, and, and watch the production, and while you're watching it, truly learn and examine and take it apart piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Felicia, you know, I think that's so important is the little things that can keep you out of heaven. And, of course, you know, we talk about the brownie. We talk about how people interact with each other and how they're treating each other, you know, relationship between Kenny. He, you know, he loves his wife, Michael. He might get a strip club, but he loves Nadine. And it's the way that she may treat him that could keep her out of heaven. But right. you know, on something in social media recently, we often overlook small things. We're looking for God to do miraculous things. And he does that every day, but we take it for granted. When we wake up every morning, that's a gift. That's a blessing. That's a miracle. Right. Think about it because we take it as an automatic thing. And so when you talk about the little things, Yes, that brownie too, but the little things like Kenny trying to work with Nadine, you know, she's not to be worked with. The fact that Nadine knows that what she's doing, how she's portraying herself, is not a good role model for you, Amber. It's not. Mm -hmm. But she got, got somebody, you know, following behind her, so that makes her feel good. But it's mm -hmm. not <laughs> the little. Thing. And she might say, but I help Amber. I give her good advice, and some of the advice may be good. But why do you do it though? Intention is just as important as the act. Exactly. So talk about these little things, all these little things that we don't even think about, will keep you from going to heaven. And that is so, so important. Well, Felicia, how can people get tickets for this play? If you want tickets for the play, you can see any of my talented cast members, or you can go into eventbrite.com to order your tickets. Um, there will be no ticket sales at the door. So please see a cast member or go to eventbrite.com to get the ticket. And also, if you can't attend, of course, we're going to have it filmed, so we'll have DVDs. But if you want to uh, financially support the production, please also go on eventbrite and make a donation. Donation, or you can cash out me at Felicia Brookins, um, or maybe even just donate to one of the cast members because, again, as I said earlier, you know, a production um, has a great expense, and we're doing all we can to help bring it to stage to you all and give you a full experience. Because after the production end, we have our VIP, VIP meet and greet event, and so all of those things, even with the DVD, um, even with our sponsor uh, gifts and packages. We want to be able to do that. And so it takes your gift of support um, to do that. And I want to also just say a thank you to all of the sponsors um, of the Brownie. Just a few uh, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, Alpha Delta Zeta Chapter, my chapter, of course. Um, Lee's Coffee and Teas, Red Fox Realty, the men of Kappa Alpha Psi, the Jackson 
Alumni Chapter, the Joy Book Club, and the Circle of Color Book Club, um, just to name a few. And we thank all of the sponsors. And it's not too late to be a sponsor. As she just said, you can go to Eventbrite. You can donate there. You can donate to a cast member. Any donation is never think that it's too small. Any donation, because again, it's those small things that yes. is different. Any yes. donation will be very uh, welcome. The play is going to be Sunday, April. I'm going to let Felicia take it from there. Tell them where, where it's going to be located. It's going to be uh, April 29th, which is, is, is a Saturday, oh, sorry. Um, at Hyatt Community College in Utica, Mississippi. So it's going to be at HBCU in Utica. So if you have never been to Utica, it's a very nice campus. So, you know, just make a trip up. Get you a couple of girlfriends together, your church members, and drive down to Utica, Mississippi, um, to the highest community college there. And join us in the Fine Arts Center at 3 o'clock. Doors open at 2 p.m. And we will start at 3 p.m. And you can sign up to get tickets to uh, meet the cast with the VIP yes. uh, tickets. Um, when you go to the event, right, we have a VIP ticket section. And so if you want to attend the meet and greet and get your play bill signed by a cast member after the production, please select the VIP ticket. Got yeah, no tickets at the door. Tickets at the door. You don't want to miss this play. And if you're interested in Felicia bringing this play to your community, you can reach out to her also. Um, because this is a wonderful play, and we want to take it on the road. So just reach out to her. We want to sell the DVD. But sometimes after you got the DVD, be like, oh, God, everybody needs to see this. You reach out to her. They are open to coming to your community. Yeah. Well, uh, Felicia and Michael and Amber, I'm going to say thank you so much for a wonderful conversation about your character and about the play. And I look forward to my next conversations with the cast and the director of The Brownie and Unforgettable Trip. And to my audience, please, please, please make your way to see this play. You are not going to regret it. You're not going to regret it. I'm telling you, it is phenomenal. And so next time, as always, take care of you so that you can take care of someone else. Bye now. Thank Bye you. Time. Time. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.